Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutation as always to the elect. And um, a particular scoffer uh, came on to uh, one of the brothers' videos. And um, his gripe was, how do we know that we have the true and only name of the Most High? All right. And um, the simple answer is uh, prophecy is how we know we have the name. And uh, ultimately, that name resonates with us via the Holy Spirit. OK, when you read uh, biblical prophecy. Isaiah, the 44th chapter. lets you know. That the Israelites would come from out of a dead state. And call upon the name of the Lord. And come to the understanding that they're Israelites. This is Isaiah 44 and 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. The dry ground are the dry bones. The Israelites who were in a dead state following after all of these different philosophies in the Gentile state of mind. But what would happen? I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. The offspring of who? The Israelites. This is who this uh, uh, letter is addressed to. This is who Isaiah is speaking to through the spirit. When you start at verse one, yet hear now, O Jacob, my servant and Israel, whom I have chosen. OK, fear not. So in the latter days, the Lord said, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. One and they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am Yahweh's. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Another shall subscribe with his hand unto Yahweh and surname himself by the name of Yashar Allah. Okay, now we see the Lord there and Lord there. Now, when you go to the scroll, the name there is Yahweh, which is the same name that was spoken at the time of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Okay, and the name that was given unto Moses, as we'll show you. Okay, so when you read Genesis, the fourth chapter, there was a particular name that would be called upon through a particular line. Okay, and that line would eventually become the Israelites. Okay, it was the sons of God because Adam was the son of God. And on the right hand side through Abel, who was slew and Seth. OK, the line of the sons of God, the line in which the Lord would give his ways, the law, statutes, the commandments, the testimonies, the prophecies, the priesthood. And his name will come through this particular line, man. Genesis four and twenty five. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, she said, said, uh, said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, who Cain slew. OK, remember Cain was slew, who had the uh, righteous sacrifice. Uh, uh, Cain slew Abel, who had the righteous sacrifice, it says. And to Seth, to him, there was born a son and he called his name Enos. Then begin men to call upon the name of the Lord. And that name is Yahweh. You see that Yahweh? It's the same thing. Yahweh. OK. So this particular name that was called on at this time, okay, and passed through uh, through this line is the name that would eventually be given unto Moses when we get to Exodus 3 and 15. Now, when you read about the Tower of Babel in Genesis the 11th chapter, okay, as you um, read down the story, Basically, the Lord confounded the languages. OK, now was the language of Hebrew confounded? Absolutely not. And let's prove that it wasn't confounded. OK, because if the, the, the Hebrew language was confounded, that means the Lord's name was confounded and taken out of the earth, which is what you have particular camps teaching is that we don't know the name of the Lord. And you have people trying to attack that faith, saying that there is no way we can know the true name of the Lord. 
Well, divine intervention is how we got it then, and divine intervention is how we're going to receive it now through the Holy Spirit. All things are possible with Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? So as you read this story, as you see that name, Lord, it's the same name, Yahweh. Okay? The, the end result of the Tower of Babel was it being confounded and the languages being scattered, right? This is uh, Genesis 11 and 8, uh, Genesis 11 and 7. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they uh, may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh, same name, scattered them abroad from thence from all the faces of the earth and they left off to build the city. Therefore was the name of it called Babel, Babylon, ba Babel, confusion, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. Now, as you read down, it says, these are the generations of Shem. Now, what does Shem mean? Who is Shem? Shem is one of Noah's three sons. You had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, Shem is who the chosen would eventually come through. What does Shem mean? Name. So the name was continued through this line. And as you read down, as you read down, Shem lived and begot our facts at, in which this is the chosen line. So this chosen line was not doing wickedness at this time and their language wasn't confounded. But let's prove it. Let's let's keep going down. Verse 13, and our facts had lived after he uh, and begot Selah 400 years, 403 years, and begot sons and daughters. And Selah lived 30 years and begot Eber. You see that? Eber. So the Lord is telling us a story here, man. What does Eber mean? That's where you get the word Hebrew. Okay, this language was not confounded through this line doing what the Lord told them to do. Just as we are, that we're living in basically a technological tower of Babel okay but but are we down with the new world order because that was basically what was happening back then a new world order are we down with it no so righteousness will not be uh, uh, confounded through our works Lord willing we're that remnant now the word Eber Ibar which is where you get Hebrew okay Ibar says the region beyond okay let's look up the uh, root root word the region beyond across basically the, the that language passed over man from the region beyond okay which is east and eden where men started to call on that name so through the works of this family through the righteousness of this this, this particular family that name which is why his name was called shem would be passed through this line okay and these are the sons of god which eventually would become known as the Israelites through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, at the time of Moses, that very name was given unto him through the word of the Lord. This is Exodus 3 and 15. And God said, moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So is, is, is this true or not? Because who, who, what source do we go to to figure out if we have the true name? Then the Most High himself through his word. Okay? <laughs> Let's look up this name that Moses was given to tell the children of Israel. Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh. The Lord, Yahweh, the same name. The Lord Power. Okay, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. He's speaking of the generations of the Israelites. Are not we a generation of Israelites? So if we are a generation of Israelites and the Most High is not a liar, then this is the name that we should call on. Because there would be a name that we would all have to call on to get out of trouble. Okay? And the leaders would teach this name. Let's get uh, Psalms 99 real quick. 
So is the most high lying or is he telling the truth? Psalms 99 and 6. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among them that called upon his name. They called upon the name of Yahweh and he answered them. You see that? He answered them. This is how the Israelites would get out of trouble through leaders calling them to the remembrance of the Most High Yahweh. You see? Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Because his son has a name as well. As the scriptures say in Proverbs, what is his name and what is his son's name if thou can tell? Okay? So this is my name forever and this is my memorial unto all generations. Are not we a generation? This is how the name has been returned unto us. Psalms 45 and 17. See, this is not something that's super uh, deep. It just is what it is. It's written in the scriptures. Either you believe it or not. We believe it. This is our faith. So when people come with these, these, these different arguments, the scriptures support what we're doing. We are fulfilling biblical prophecy of the Israelites calling on those names, man. Psalms 45 and 17, I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. So shall the people praise thee forever and ever. See, the truth was just without fruit. It never was destroyed, as the prophecy says in 2nd Edris. Yes, the, the truth was without fruit. The name of Yahweh at a particular point was not known by the Israelites. But what is he saying here? I will make thy name to be remembered. Zakar, to recall, call to mind, to remember. And I know brothers are thinking, Baruch, <laughs> to cause to remember, remind. Okay, as the scriptures say, though you once knew this. You see that? Though you once knew this, to take memorial, make remembrance, to mention. And how would he do that? Through the prophets, man. Okay? Baruch, the fourth chapter. Baruch, the second chapter, rather. And uh, I'll start at um, 29. If ye will not hear my voice, surely this great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Why? Because the Lord would raise up prophets, the priesthood, and which would communicate to the children of Israel what they needed to know in order to be delivered. Those who have ears will hear, man. So there is a name that we will remember. And I and shall know that I am the Lord their God and I will give them hearts and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think up on my name. Think up on my name, man. And as you read down and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord. And, and I will bring them again into the land, which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land that I have given them. You see that? But that starts with the Israelites remembering that name. Okay. Remembering that name. Okay. So what did the Lord say? I will make thy name. Okay. Okay to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Okay? Psalms 135 and 13. Thy name, O Yahweh, same name. We look it up in the Hebrews, the same name. Going back to Genesis, the fourth chapter, that men begin to call on through that line. Name is Shem. You see that? So the Lord tells us a story the whole time while while these names have been have, were given to men, you know, back in Genesis, man, the Lord was telling us a story. That name would not be diminished amongst the Israelites, man. Okay, it's just that it will be without fruit for a particular time, man. As a matter of fact, let's get that. So this cuts IUIC, who are 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 telling you, you Israelites, that there is no way we can know that name. We're gonna get a new name once we get into the kingdom. 
Well, when you read about the kingdom of heaven, the name of the most high is still Yahweh when you read into the scrolls. So they're anti-Messiah, man. Okay. Second Edra 6 and 28, 27, for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. Because what would happen as Esau ruled? Well, he blasphemed everything. Revelation 13 and 6, and he opened his mouth. Who's the he? Esau, Edom. And blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, which are the Israelites, and them that dwell in heaven. He blasphemed the name. He blasphemed the Israelites. He blasphemed the Most High. He blasphemed the angels, telling people they were aliens and all of these various different things. So he lied on everything to keep us disconnected from our power. So what's happening now is that evil and deceit are being quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which had been so long without fruit shall be declared, man. And we're singing the new song. Which of which? What are the main two lyrics in that song? Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Which are the names that will, will, will call the Most High to remembering his chosen seed, man. We would have to call on that name. You see? Going back to uh, Psalms 135 and 13, thy name... O Yahweh endureth forever, and thy memorial, what is a memorial? Something to be remembered, okay? Memorial, remembrance, memory, okay? <laughs> As the scriptures say, though you once knew this. Jude 1 and 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, that how that Yahweh, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. So we once knew this. Okay? I, he's putting us in remembrance, man. Via raising up the prophets, man. Put you in remembrance of these things. <laughs> second Peter 3 and 1. This second epistle, beloved, now I write unto you. All right, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, by way of remembrance, man. Second Peter's one and twelve. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye uh, know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So what, what are the men of the Lord, the leaders to put Israel in remembrance of man, what they would need to do to get out of those situations, man. Okay. The, the true gospel, how the Lord work mighty works, man. Okay. And that Lord had a name. Okay. So <laughs> going back here, Thy name, O Yahweh, endureth forever in thy memorial, O Yahweh, throughout all generations. So these prophecies of the Israelites returning to that name would have to be fulfilled. We're fulfilling that prophecy, man. That's how I know I have the true name. Because the scripture said the name will return unto us, man. And, it, and there's power with those names. And those names resonate with us. And when you go to the, the, the prophecies of the kingdom of heaven... Isaiah 66 and 22, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord. It's the same name. So shall your seed in your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from new moon to another and from Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahweh. It's the same name. So we're going to be worshiping in the name of Yahweh in the kingdom of heaven. It's the same name. Okay? And his son's name is Yahweh Shai, man. Let's get that. Let's let's finish it off here. <laughs> I believe it's in Proverbs 31. Um maybe Psalms 30 and 4. Yep. So, Proverbs 30 and 4, who have ascended in, up into heaven or descended? <laughs> Shai. Who have gathered the wind 
in his fist, who have bound the uh, waters in a garment, who have established all the ends of the earth. What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou can tell. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And we put our trust in the Holy Scriptures, which lets us know these names will be returned unto us, man. That's how we know we have the true name. All right. And nothing could tap into that faith, man, because we believe and it's written and we're fulfilling it. Shalom.